Hey everyone, Melissa here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, it feels like it has been like forever since I have spoken with all of you. It's only really been about a week and a half, but um, anyway, I guess that I guess I guess that's what happens when you are in the swing of making some videos and uh, you you go a week or so. There's really been no real reason for my absence. Um, you know, just uh, just general life, um, but just catching up on a few things. Um, I had my first um, vaccine on um, Monday, so that went well. Um, some of the side effects, um, I had some of the typical side effects. I had the Pfizer vaccine, so like yesterday I had a pretty bad headache and had... Um, you know, it was just sort of like fatigued and a little tired and uh but anyway you know small price to pay for um for for being vaccinated right um so anyway i go for my second shot on the 26th so looking forward to that um anyway but what i wanted to talk to you about today i wanted to tell you about what i read in march um, most of these i've already talked about elsewhere on other videos i will link to them as I can. Hopefully the sun is not that bright. It's like a gorgeous evening here on the deck and uh, I just wanted to, I'm just sort of like in the mood of, you know, after being cooped up, you know, for so long in the winter um, that I just want to maximize like every second of, um, of, of you know, warm, any, every second of these early spring days. Um, anyway, so couple things I wanted to tell you about. I wanted to tell you about my March reads. Um, and we're just going to go in order here of how I read them. And like I said, I've talked about some of these before. First one book that I read in March was Remember to Forget Me by Carrie Neville. Um, Carrie is a friend of mine and this was a book that came out a couple years ago. This is her second collection of short stories. And her first book is Necessary Lies, which I also, which I have out from the library right now. Um, I cannot really believe that I, it has taken me this long to read this collection. I think that this would be great for anyone who um, claims not to like short stories, because I think that these are all um, these are all stories that can really that really stand on themselves. Yeah, I was um, looking for. I, I really I would have loved to. Um, have had like more of, of, of about these characters would have liked to have known a little bit more there's like a glare in my glasses I'm really sorry about that um, like I said I really don't want to move from where I'm sitting um, or, or from the deck at all but um, hopefully it, this will work anyway um, and also taking off my glasses is probably not really much of an option but anyway great short story collection I read this for the for the Irish readathon and um like i said these are really very relatable stories um they're about loss and love um about wanting to hold on to what is already gone um but that you feel like um like, like needing to like but being unable to let go of the emotional pain um that the memory of the person or the situation carries and so um I, I think I, I loved every one of these stories. Um, there was one exception, the last one, The Lion Man, that uh, did not really quite resonate for me. Um, I still gave this five stars because I thought that the writing was great. Um, I thought that you know the characters are really well developed. And like I said, each of these short stories really kind of stands um, on their own, uh, even though they have like that common theme connected to them of, you know, love and loss and memory and all of that. A uh, second book that I read in March was Wife, Daughter, Self, and Memoir in Essays by Beth Kephart, who I've also talked about on this channel before. Um, Beth is a friend of mine, and this is, um, I don't know whether this is her 30th, 30 book or not, but um, it is a wonderful memoir. She, Beth is a teacher of memoir. She is a National Book Award finalist, and um, she just really is an, a master of um, the form 
of the memoir form. Um, I think that this is one. This is probably her most personal memoir to date. Um, as the title indicates, it's divided into three sections: wife, daughter, self. In the first one, we um, we we kind of slip into retrospect. We we go back in time to when Beth and her husband Bill were first dating, when they met at a architectural firm in, um, in in downtown Philadelphia and you know it, it kind of that section really makes us recall our own decisions at that that age and our own um, you know the expectations of our parents and um, the disappointments that we may have um, you know provide you know given them um, and uh, you know we she writes about her her and her husband's lives as artists and um, about the silences and the spaces that a marriage requires. Um, there's one quote that I really want, I wanted to read from this is, We are not Virginia and Leonard. We are not Zelda and F. Scott. We are not Georgia and Alfred, Frida and Diego, Lee and Jackson, Joan and John. Still, we are original because we are original. And because I cry at every wedding, imagining again the start of things, imagining the end, the grief preordained for one or the other of us. Not that there have, haven't already been endings, not that we haven't already recovered. We knew to recover. We recovered for the sake of us. We told ourselves that we recovered for our son, but I'm increasingly inclined towards honesty. We recovered for ourselves. And she writes more about what that means. Um, I think that, you know, my other notes on this, and I will link to a video where I've talked to about this in more, um, you know, she talks about reinventing their lives through reimagining their business and um, how how they work. Um, they have always had like a commingling of, of, of their work together. Bill illustrated the cover of, of this book. Um, Daughter is a look at, um, a layered look at the role within a family. Um, Beth is a middle child and she writes about being in the shadow of her brother who everyone considers a genius and how um, the relationship with her mother changes when there has been an accident that changes her um, forever and um, and then about being like the adult daughter of a parent who needs um, caregiving and um, she writes that the cost there's a cost to the cost of vigilance um, writing about her father um, in an assisted living facility and wanting to be there maybe when that parent doesn't want you there uh, all the time and self has a kind of a feeling like a nebulous quality about it perhaps intentionally so and it's about how ourselves how we are made up of not only the roles that we play, the identities that we um, carve out for ourselves, but also um, returning to like the, but also like the role models or, or the people who we find similarities with. And in, for best case, that is the artist um, Henrietta Wyeth. Um, and so she writes a lot about her. Uh, it's just, she has like a very distinct poetic style of writing. Um, she really has no comparison really. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I, I think that this is just a, a real, a stunning, stunning memoir. So um, then I read also another um, kind of like part memoir, part history, part political commentary, Conditional Citizens on Belonging in America by Layla Leilami. And uh, she has been, um, she is immigrated to the United States from Morocco uh, more than 20 years ago. And she's been in the United States um, working as a teacher, um, as a writer. And she writes a very honestly and very candidly about how um, people, you know, there are certain people in the United States <coughs> who are not afforded the same rights and the same privileges as others based on their nationality, based on um, the color of their skin, based on religion. Um, and those discriminations are faced by um, other people, um, by employers, by um, 
you know, landlords. And so she write, she writes about that. Um, she also talk, like I said, she also write, gives some history um, into immigration. She also writes um, political commentary about um, the Trump administration and their policies against immigrate, immigrants. And um, so anyway, very worthwhile read. Um, but this one was, was great. The next book I read was The Naomi Letters by Rachel Menes, and um, this is a, um, this was a, a really um, provocative collection of poetry. Um, it is uh, one woman um, writing to another. Um, so it's a woman, Rachel, writing to Naomi. Um, and we know that Rachel is 30 years old at the time of the writing. There's no indication that um, it's the same Rachel who is the author. I, I think that there there is that assumption, but that may not be a correct assumption. Um, there is clearly like they um, have had a relationship, they've had a romantic relationship, and uh, Naomi is not in the picture anymore uh, for whatever reason. We don't know why. Um, there is one line, um, are you safe where you are? Where are you, Naomi? I have Im imagined your death. I keep imagining it this morning. So we don't know, you know, whether Naomi has left of like her own volition or whatever. I mean, we, we assume that. But um, suffice it to say, uh, Naomi is not in the picture and uh, we don't know uh, why. Um, but this is a exploration of of, um, of love, of, about, of mental illness. Um, it is a celebration of uh, poetry, of women poets. Um, it, is, it, it is really a fascinating collection. And this comes out at the end of the month on the 27th, I believe. April is National Poetry Month, so this would be a great collection to, uh, to pick up um, for this month. Um, I, I think it, it is just really, uh, it, it's very evocative, um, it, it's very sensual, it is, uh, it, it, it's really, uh, it, was, it was a wonderful read. So, um, some other lines that I have, um, uh, let's see, is Naomi, I have built my life in the shape of a house that my grandmother would know how to keep. Realizing this, I long to unbrick it. Uh, have you realized my utter ordinariness yet? How each book I, re I, read, I read you also lives in a thousand libraries, the same poets staring from the same weathered book jackets, witnessing the hand opening to the same page. The voices in the, in the bed break all their morning quiet in unison. What discoveries I have made awake in the dark, what joy, joyless shapes I have counted there. Those nights I would descend on the stairs in a single leap and sit bare-shouldered on my stoop in the biting win winter. I would hold my head in the frozen air until the fog arrived. So um, that gives you a sense of what uh, that is like. Um, for March Mystery Madness, I read My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, and uh, this was the first Daphne du Maurier that I have ever read. I have not read Rebecca. Uh, I do have The House on the Strand uh, that I have to read, um, but this is the first one I read. So this is the story of a young man, Philip Ambrose, who, um, uh, Philip uh, Ashley, um, who is, um, he's a young man, he's like, he's 24 when, when we meet him, and he has been uh, raised and lived with his, um, his un Uncle Ambrose um, for all of his life. Um, his parents are dead, and uh, so he's an orphan, and so he has lived uh, with his cousin in this uh, grand house, and so Ambrose goes off to um, to Italy, and to to um, he goes off to Italy, and he meets this woman uh, Rachel, who turns out to be like a relation of theirs. So, so as the title suggests, um, 
you know, she's a she's a cousin, like a second cousin or something like that. And and so he falls in love with, with her, marries her, and lives on a state. But um, then something happens. He does, he becomes very ill, um, and it's described as kind of like a, a, a brain disease of sorts. And so you know, there's a sense that you know Rachel is um, is responsible for this, and then. You know, so Philip goes to Italy to try to find out what happened to his uncle and in the meantime Rachel comes to England um, and stays at their house for a while so then then all kinds of strange and odd things kind of happen from there um, so I you know th this is a classic it's a classic mystery and I I like this one I wouldn't say that I was like enthralled by it. I do think that the middle of the book kind of dragged a little bit, uh, a little bit too much description of like parties and going visiting and riding in carriages and uh, all of that ki kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I, I did enjoy it. It definitely kept my attention. And um, yeah, very, very suspenseful. I mean, Daphne du Maurier definitely does the psychological um, uh, you know suspense thing very well and so I was glad I read this for um, March Mystery Madness. I do have to mention too my current read is um, Virginia Woolf's The Voyage Out and so in this book um, the main character is also Rachel and she is on a ship um, her father um, manages or owns I don't know um, this ship and they're taking a voyage from London to South America and she meets this couple on board who are Mr. and Mrs. Ambrose. So I was just really curious as to whether the two have anything like, you know, this, The Voyage Out was written in, in uh, I think like 1915 and I think My Cousin Rachel was published in uh, 1951. So it was, it's just kind of a strange coincidence I think that both books that I have been reading have that in common so I was an English major but I didn't really major like in the classic literatures if, if someone out there knows of some connection between these two books I think uh, that would be really fun to know but anyway I enjoyed my cousin Rachel and I plan I do plan to read more Daphne du Maurier in the future so um, okay the next book I read in March is let me get some of my notes here is Ernest Hemingway on writing I know Hemingway's having a bit of a resurgence at the moment because he is the subject of the Ken Burns um, Ken Burns's latest I don't know. It's not quite a mini series, right? I think it's only about like six hours long. But anyway, there's a show on it. I am not watching that because, um, despite buying this book, um, I am not a Hemingway fan. So let me explain. So like this book, it, I bought this two years ago, like exactly um, two years ago. I think like today um, at the Hemingway house. You can kind of see the sticker on there. Um, so I, w I went to Key West uh, two years ago f for my 50th birthday with my best friend. My best friend and I have birthdays that are two, three days apart. So we had turned 50 um, two years ago and um, so that, that tells you that I just had a birthday uh, this past weekend. Anyway, I've gone down to Key West and of course you know we toured the Hemingway house because even though I'm not much of a Hemingway fan it's like I, I felt like I, I had to, to tour the Hemingway house right um, so this was my souvenir that I bought from from the Hemingway house um, definitely well worth the visit um, but this is as you can tell it's like a very slim volume and it's basically a collection of quotes um, that's compiled from that the editor uh, Larry Phillips compiled from Hemingway's novels from his letters mostly to F. Scott Fitzgerald his letters his stories um, his interviews 
Um, so quotes about writing that he took from all these sources and that is basically it. So main takeaways from this is that war, war is the best subject to write about according to Hemingway. Um, he was an atrocious speller. Um, the man like could not spell for his life and he had somewhat of an obsession of, like about beating other writers like beating as in um, besting them you know like in his work being better than them um, those phrases honest to God sound like something that you know could have been written like by like the former uh, president um, and it's just like you know I want to beat you know F Scott or I want to beat you know um, Ezra Pound and um, and it was just like this this competition but it was just like sort of this I, I like it, like it was almost childish you know it was, it was kind of like like petty um so that part was just like oh my god you know get get over yourself but anyway um this was fine this would probably be the likely the last Hemingway book that I read I read of course Old Man in the Sea in high school I read Immovable Feast which I did like and I've read like some of his stories I think that they were DNFs and I've read um, to have and have not, um, I, you know, I just, the man, he, he is just not for me. Um, he, he's just not. And I think that, you know, I mean, like old white, white dead writers, I mean, just, there's just so much more out there, right? Um, you know, so I just think that, I don't know how useful this book will be to my own writing, but, and, and I don't think I really had any expectations that it would be, but um, the book definitely elicits a nice memory nonetheless. So, you know, a nice souvenir, but wouldn't think that it would be that great. Um, what will be helpful to my own writing is Dreyer's English, I, An Utterly Correct Guide to Clarity in Style um, by Benjamin Dreyer. And he is the copy chief for Random House the publisher and um, I really enjoyed this book I thought that this book was you know great I mean not many people would probably choose to read a um, a, cop a style guide um, or want to read it cover to cover but he definitely makes it worth your time because he, he, he is very funny he's very witty he's definitely very knowledgeable um, he it states that he is not a grammarian he grammar is not his thing what he likes I mean he he approaches copy editing from like you know knowing like basic rules of course but um, by what you know looks right and what sounds right um, you know in prose on the page so Dreyer's English um, it's very very entertaining I, I did do a video about this in one of my I believe in my Sunday salons uh, what I also appreciated about this is oh I should I should also say too important point so this is the paperback version and I had assumed that this was like the paperback version of the hardback version right and it is not uh, what this is is this is the UK version of Dreyer's English so yeah um, which which is would be fine and well and good if I was in the UK but I am not in the UK so anyway um, but I mean th so there's certainly some differences um, between there's uh, several differences between you know the uh, American English and the UK English and uh, I think that that is uh, and, that, and that, those were interesting to read about um, but I did not realize that this was the UK version um, when I um, when I purchased well when I got this I got this from um, the 800 subscriber giveaway from uh, Keely at um, a bibliophile's journey from her channel and uh, so this was uh, something that I ordered from book depository but I really love I, I really did enjoy this this was my booktube spin the, the uh, event that uh, Rick McDonnell organized and I understand that he's going to be doing this again in May so that is great um, but I'm, I'm glad I read this um, I'm glad I own a copy of it I think I'm going to take it to work because I do do a lot of editing and writing in my day job and I thought that that was fantastic so and finally we have a DNF that um, it, that happened in March 
and I gotta say that this is a book that everybody loves. Everyone loves this. I absolutely hated it. I just like, I had like a visceral reaction to it and it is Luster by Raven Leilani. I gotta tell you that um, I lasted all of eight pages, eight pages um, in of this book. I thought the writing was horrible. I did not like these characters. They made me so pissed off. Um, I just, I, I just, it, it made me so angry, like so viscerally angry. I could not take it. I was listening to it on audio and like, I, I started it when I was on the way to the grocery store. And by the time I got to the grocery store, which is like all of five minutes away, I had to, I, I, I couldn't take it. I, I just could not take it. I like, it is very unusual for me to have like this degree of anger towards a book. Um, and clearly it's, a, it's me um, because everyone loves this and it's like up for a million awards and it's already won a million awards. So clearly like the problem is me, but I hated this book. I, I mean, I just, I, I just, oh my God. Um, so yeah, so that was my DNF for the month. So anyway, uh, I know this video is running a little bit long and so I will wrap it up here. So let me know what you are reading. Um, let me know what you um, liked in March and I will talk to you again in a new vi next video real soon. Thanks so much guys. Talk to you later. Bye.